Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Paul from Prior Witness. Hopefully you enjoyed that demo up front. So what I was trying to do is this all came about while I was just, you know, messing around and, you know, working on some covers of my own music and all that fun stuff. And, you know, I got to really thinking about how do you, what is the right way of recording bass? Like, why is, why is, why is this not a thing? Why is this not scientifically, you know, ran down and said this is the way it shall be done and you're probably thinking well, wait, wait a minute there's, yes there is there's like 20 million youtube videos out there telling me exactly how to do this yes and the whole point of this video at the end of the day was really to kind of prove to myself and share this with the rest of you that what i have around the house what i have right now it's good enough and in fact it might sound pretty kick-ass if i may say so uh I apologize for the swearing that there's children around it. I'm sorry um, but in all seriousness you know I took I took a few different ways of doing this all the way from the cheapest method all the way to the most expensive method and you know sometimes you can drive yourself crazy with well I gotta get that next piece of gear so I can get that sound and sometimes you're chasing a sound when you realize the sound you're looking for is right there in front of you the whole time and that's that's what really drove me to make this video and I wanted to share this with you in my my journey through this but enough of me yapping I wanted to take you through it so as you saw the pictures kind of representing you know what the plugins and what the thing was that I was doing that was sort of a snapshot of everything but to take you more in depth so if you want to stick around I'll take you more in depth as what was going on with each of those um, and why I did what I did so the very first one you saw the little distortion plug in there uh, that was the free distortion plug in that comes from Reaper and what I was doing there is I was taking my bass guitar and plugging that straight into my audio interface that's it. And I was taking the, the DI signal and mixing it uh, with with the uh, distortion signal. And that was a screenshot of my settings. And there's a little you know wet dry thing that you can do so that you don't have to split it into two different tracks. I've experimented with that myself. I don't really find there's much of a difference in taking two different tracks and bussing them in together or just taking one track and just you know tw tweaking the little mix and wet knob and all that kind of thing. So to each, to each their own. Um, that's what I did. And by the way, there's there's no fancy parallel processing going on with any of this stuff. And um, as as you make your way forward, you know we're going from about the, the cheapest solution all the way to the most expensive. Um, and then if you're wondering, yes, there is some slight post processing going on. There's a there's some subtle EQ and some subtle compression going on just to kind of mix everything together. Because you know I put drums with it to try to give it some kind of you know, texture. I thought about adding guitar to it too. And if you want to hear another video with, with some of the guitar mixed in, let, let me know and I'll, I'll do like a part two of this and kind of show you how this all mixes together. But this just gives you a, a dry view of what the bass would sound like with, with drums. Uh, so there's that going on. I have a Mac, Mackie um, uh, mixer too. And so it might slightly color the sound, I don't know, but to be safe, I want to let you know too that everything ran through this Mackie mixer uh, that is on, on your screen right now. So that was, everything was going straight into the mixer and then into the audio interface. So then the second thing that I decided to do was also kind of a free solution, um, depending on your, your method of free, uh, but there's the TSE BOD, the BOD, it's simulating that, that good old fashioned Sans amp, you know, plug in that you, or plug in. Uh, amp pedal that you can get um, for a lot more money than free. Uh, so I, I chose to go with that too. That was number two. Sounded great. And then we started getting the more of the I'm going to spend a little bit of money territory. So then we do the Nimbrini Black Ice, uh, which you can get on sale for about 29 bucks. And that's what I recommend you do. Normally that kind of stuff goes on sale about once every couple months or so. and You can find it pretty cheap. Um, but if you're really hankering for it and you can't wait, uh, goes for about 137 um, without the sound. So, there you go. And it has built-in cab simulation too. I could have used that, but instead I wanted to keep things consistent once I got to the stuff that I wanted to use cab sims with. So from this point forward, we're using Torpedo Wall of Sound, which I'll put on the screen now. And that was using two cabs, um, mixing um, a, a Subway cab from Mesa and a uh, Harky, Harka, H-A-R-K-E, that big metal bass thing, uh, you, you, the 4x10, mix those two together. And the reason why there's four rows is they're all different mics, they're all you know mixed in a certain way. Um, and those are tweaked, but I kept those the same uh, for the next several sessions there. So that was number three. Then the fourth one 
you do something a little crazy, and I have done this before, and I told I got really great bass tone doing this, I straight away from it, and I'm, I'm glad I, I did this experiment, because it showed me, and I hopefully it showed you, can you use a bass guitar amp, or excuse me, a guitar amp, a regular guitar amp? Well, yeah, you can. So if you're a guitarist like me, and bass is one of those things, just kind of like a, an afterthought most of the time, unfortunately, sorry to the bass guitarists out there, but it is most of the time. You're writing a song, and you're, you're heavy on the vocals, you're heavy on the guitars, um, maybe you're heavy on the on the synth or the keyboard or whatever. The last thing you're thinking about is the actual bass guitar, you know. Uh, it happens a lot. Uh, I'm trying to get away from that myself, but, you know, that that's kind of what happens. And so then you're left with, well, you know, well, if you don't have a bass amp, but you have a you have a guitar amp, and you don't have all this modeling software available to you, um, and you can't afford it, you don't want to go get it. I don't know. Whatever the reasons, you can use a guitar amp, and you can get a very unique sound from that. And I was using the Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier, the clean channel, and that's how I was getting my tone there, and then that was running into uh, the torpedo wall sound. Now, there is some pre-processing going on with the two real amps, too. So I went all out. Not only was I using real amps, but I also have a pedal board, and I was using the Plethora X5 uh, to use compression ahead of that. So I had a compressor going on, and then I also had, if you saw, I just did a video on, on the Paisley. It can do you know other things besides just country. Well, guess what? I ran my bass guitar through that as well, and I had the, the bass guitar getting some grit from the blue side of the Paisley pedal. So that's that was the dirt you were hearing there. So I got the guitar running into the Paisley, then the Paisley into the, the Plethora X5, and then the Plethora X5 is going into the amps. And I split out the, the signal to both so that I could just do run recording and keep it the same, same riff there at the end. And you heard the Mesa first, and then the last section was the Yorkville Block 80B. And I, I don't think you can find these things anymore. I did look on Reverb very briefly. You know, they're out there, but they're hard to find. Um, but they're cheap when you do find them. So if you like the tone that you heard at the very end of the video, that's the Yorkville. And I wanted to do that too, because I wanted to see, well, what if I just use a real bass amp? And then put that into uh, torpedo and wall sound. What kind of sound would I get? And so that's what I ended up doing. So to recap, we went from cheapest to the most expensive stuff, right? So we combined real pedals with real amps, and the only thing that was digital at that point were the cabinets, okay? But for the first three solutions, it was just my bass guitar going straight into the interface. That's it, and then everything else was software-based. So. The first one was just DI signal mixed with a free distortion plugin. The second one was DI signal mixed in with that TSC BOD plugin that everybody loves to use. And then the third one, you get a little bit more price here, but you're still all software. And that was the Black Ice plugin mixed with torpedo notes, wall of sound. And then the last two were the more expensive solutions. That was running my bass guitar through a real pedal board with some things turned on, a compressor and a dirt pedal going into those amplifiers and then from the amplifiers into their respective cabinets. So there you go. Which one did you think sounded the best? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked it, click the like button and all that fun stuff. I never asked, but I figured, hey, why not? And uh, you know, let me know what you want to hear next. Let me know if you learned something. That's the most important thing I'm trying to do with this channel. While I'm messing around with my own stuff, I learned things too. So I thought I'd share that with you and give you something else to to chew on a little bit. Hope you learned something. Rock on. Have a great day. Thanks a lot.